Hello and welcome to Recurring Events Calendar. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. In this short video, I'm gonna show you how to get, use, and modify a really cool calendar template. And what's cool about it is you can set it up for the first year with all the birthdays for your family, and then print this every year and give it as a gift to your parent or grandparent. Let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. Open Excel and go to File, New. Then in the search field, type Seasonal Calendar. Click it and then click Create. All right, and now that we have the workbook, let's head to the next exercise, exercise two. Okay, let's talk about basic usage. We're gonna notice that we have one worksheet for every month. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. And I think the way this template was designed looks really cool. You can, of course, change these images out as desired. The January tab includes some calendar settings. For example, the year. We can simply change the year and we see that the year is updated for all the months. We can also change the week start. So if you prefer to start at Monday, you could pick that and everything dynamically updates. Let's go ahead and change this back to Sunday. Now let's change this back to 2030. Okay, now if I wanted to give this as a gift, I could type the birthdays or holidays into each of these cells directly. For example, I could cruise over here and put New Year's Day. The problem with that is what happens next year? Let's flip this to 2031 and all of a sudden, this cell value is not accurate. So let's do something else instead. Let's set up a table that has all the birthdays and holidays. Then we'll write formulas to retrieve those events into the calendar. And that way, updating this every year is like no big deal. We'd be able to print this out and give it as a gift every year in like no time. So let's do that in the next exercise. If you use Excel frequently, I'd love to help you improve your skills. I'll help you learn Excel so you can get your work done faster. I'd love to have you check out my training programs. Use the link in the description to learn more. Exercise three. So rather than typing these events into these cells, we wanna store them in a separate table. Let's insert a new worksheet for that. So I'll click this plus to insert a new worksheet. And I'm just gonna click and drag it over here. Let's right click, rename. I'm gonna call this events. And let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, our events table is gonna have the month, the day, and the event. So one, one is New Year's. And let's say January 5th is Jeff birthday. And let's say 115 is Lisa birthday. And you get the idea. To make it easier to write our formulas, I'm going to convert this ordinary range into a table. The way that I'll do that is by going to insert table. And I'll just click OK. This table is named table one. We could of course change this table name here if we wanted to, but we'll stick with the default table one. Let's practice this formula before we go write it in our calendar. Let's cruise back over here and let me just enter a date of 1-5-2030. If I wanted to retrieve the events for this date, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the filter function, equals filter. And I'm gonna say that I want the event name, comma, but I only wanna include certain rows. So two opening prints. I only want to include those rows where the month column is equal to, and I'm going to use the month function of our date. And I'm going to close that segment down. And then I'm going to use the asterisk for and. Open another paren, and where the table day column is equal to the day of our date. Close the day function, close that second segment, and then close the argument. Close the function and enter. And now we can see that this filter function retrieves the event based on the month and day. What if there are multiple events on the same day? For example, let's change this to five. Well, now we see the results spill into two cells, but our calendar only has one cell. So we need to combine these into a single result. What we're gonna do is wrap the array to text function around all of that. And then we're gonna close function and enter. And that way, that one cell will show multiple events. Now, the other thing we need to account for is what if there are no events for a day? For example, what if we go with 1, 6, 20, 30? Well, we get this error. So rather than display the error, we're gonna go and we're gonna modify our filter function. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna update the third argument to the filter function, which is if empty. So what it's saying is, if the results are empty, in other words, I can't find anything, comma, what do we want to return to the cell? Well, we'll just return double quote, which is an empty string. In other words, nothing. And then we hit enter. And as we can see, that elegantly handles the error. You could put something else there if you'd like. 
So let me set this back to 1, 5, 20, 30. Cool. Now that this formula is working, I basically need to write a similar formula in all of these cells. So I could write the formulas here, but instead what I'll do is I'll copy paste. So I'm gonna do a control C copy. I'm gonna cruise back over here, but instead of just doing a paste, which will also replace any formatting, I'm gonna do a paste special. So I'm gonna to go to paste special, and I'm gonna say only paste the formulas. And that way I won't replace any of this beautiful cell formatting. And I click okay. And I don't really need this note across all these other cells. So once again, I'm gonna cruise back over here. I'm gonna do a control C copy, cruise back over here. And once again, I'm just gonna do a paste special formulas and click okay. Now let's copy that one and paste here, paste, 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 and paste. And since all of these other worksheets have the exact same structure, we could technically go like this. Select February, cruise over here, hold down the shift key, click December. Now that's just selected all of these worksheets. Now what I can do is select all of these cells and do paste special formulas. So I'm gonna select all of these, hold down control, select all of these, these, and these, and do a pay special formulas, click OK. Okay, so that's just kind of a quick way to paste that formula into all of these cells. Okay, let's test it out. Let's move this to, let's say the 10th. Let's put something in February. We'll call it 214 Valentine's Day, and you get the idea. So let's head to January. Those changes look good. Let's go to February. That change looks good and so on and so forth. Now, what's really cool is next year we go 2031. Everything updates accordingly. We print this, we give it as a gift and we're good to go. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.